She, she can't remember her exit interview from the FBI because she said she had a concussion and she lost her memory. Well, I want to know how long, Mrs. Clinton, did you have this loss of memory? They didn't bother to go look at the medical records to see if that was true. I don't, did she have that loss of memory for two, two days, three days, four days? I don't know, we start to get to two, three days. We're, ta we're talking about a really serious stroke. Rudy Giuliani this morning speculating about Hillary Clinton's health with absolutely no evidence. Uh, but these are his latest comments about Hillary Clinton. The Clinton campaign's communication director, Jen Palmieri, joins me now. Uh, that just happened this morning, so I wanted to give you a chance to respond I, This is to the it. first I've seen of it, and it is pathetic. It's pathetic that that is what the former mayor of New York City has resorted to in trying to advocate for his candidate, but I suppose it's all that he has left. Well, Hillary Clinton, is seems to be enjoying a moment certainly given what donald trump has been doing the last week yet at the same time she was in ohio and our new the new quinnipiac poll yesterday showed that trump is up 47 to clinton's 42 uh, gary johnson at six six points so ohio is now uh, a really tough state for you it always was but you spent a lot of time there a lot of money there mm -hmm. Uh, are you going to have to write it off? No, we were certainly not giving up on Ohio, and I expect you'll see her there uh, a number of more uh, for a number of more visits. Uh, President Clinton's there today. He's going to be doing a bus tour, and I'm sure you'll see Senator Kane there too. It is uh, there's you know we have uh, the luxury of having a lot of paths to 270, and um, a lot of states that are in play that we're doing well in. And certainly, if the election were today, we would uh, we would certainly we'd have more than 270. And and um, Ohio is going to continue to be a priority, but we have a lot of other states that uh, are equally, if not more important. Donald Trump last night embracing this tax issue, yes. saying that he shows what a great businessman he is, that he could, he knows the tax system, so he's the best equipped yeah. to close that loophole. I wanted to get you to respond to yeah, that. Yeah, he he'd said that he handled it brilliantly, and this shows that. I don't think, um, as Secretary Clinton said yesterday, it doesn't make you, losing a billion dollars in one year uh, uh, sort of boggles the mind. I don't think most people consider that to be the move of a genius or something that people have handled brilliantly. And what it shows is that uh, what he's done his whole career is gaming the rig system and now he's telling us that he's the person that can fix it but it's not just we've seen over the course of the last few weeks evidence stack up about how he always puts Trump first when it comes to the economy so he uh, 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 he's stiffing taxpayers doesn't pay taxes for we believe as much as two decades uh, leaves that bill to the rest of us um, in order for him to do well he doesn't pay contractors he stiffs money that he owns them small businesses and then if you look at his tax policies now they're geared towards helping the, uh, the wealthiest um, and with the middle class uh, footing the bill for that as well. So this is a pattern for him and what we're seeing. And, you know, this is what happens is if, if you're uh, in the final closing weeks, uh, all of your uh, vulnerabilities, what people need to know about you in terms of your policy and your record, they finally do come to light. And I think people are seeing that that's what this guy's about. He's somebody who puts Trump first. One of the things that he brought up last night and likely will in the second debate is the Goldman Sachs speech transcript. It's something Bernie Sanders went after her about. What about releasing those transcripts of those speeches? The, I mean, Hillary Clinton has been, uh, has has put forward more information about herself uh, than I believe any presidential candidate in modern, uh, probably in history. I think we can safely, uh, I think we can safely say that. Uh, I think with what what the cons uh, with the sort of charge, if you will, about was uh, about the speeches that she gave was is she is she is she indebted to anyone? And we've seen that she's put forward a very aggressive Wall Street reform plan in addition to supporting what's already there, but more we can do. She's already shown that her, who she's going to be indebted to is voters, not um, uh, not Wall Street. And that's not what we've seen with uh, that's not what we've seen with Trump. But moreover, he hasn't met the very basic standard of disclosure when it comes to releasing taxes. She's put 40 years into the public domain. We've seen three pages. We've seen three pages that have shown that he uh, wrote off a billion dollars. And so we're very interested to see what's in the rest of the 12,000 pages that he says he has. And President Clinton in Ohio, or excuse me, he was in Michigan yesterday, another battleground state. Yes. In Michigan yesterday, he criticized Obamacare. Uh, 
he said that it's hurting small businessmen. It's okay for people on Medicaid. It's okay for people on Medicare. Uh, 25 million people have been enrolled, but the small business people are really getting hurt. What he was expressing was the same view that not only Hillary Clinton has, but President Obama would express as well, which is that as much progress has been made with uh, the Affordable Care Act, that uh, there are uh, uh, that there are still a lot of cost issues to be dealt with for uh, not just for small businesses, but for some individuals, which is why she's put forward. Uh, Hillary um, has put forward um, uh, additional policies, including public option that would make uh, that would make the plans more competitive, give people more uh, affordable options. Um, as well as dealing, dealing with things like out-of-pocket costs. So there's no doubt, as President Clinton said, the uh, Affordable Care Act has an enormous good. Donald Trump would get rid of it, which means uh, people would be able to be uh, prohibited care based on a pre-existing condition, which means if you're 26 years old, you still can't be on your parents' health care plan. So uh, there's a lot. Of, there's still more work to be done, and that's what President Clinton was expressing. And finally, the debate strategy. You've been here since Saturday working with the Tim Kaine prep mm -hmm. team. Um, what is his particular challenge? Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine, they prep. They take these things seriously. They do their, uh, they do their homework. I, for, we see the value for uh, Senator Kaine, which is the same as we saw for Hillary last week, which was this is an opportunity to be in front of a big audience. And we just what we want um, people to see is, is that they have plans that's going to make the economy work for everybody, not just those at the top. That's always our number one goal in these audiences. Now, I think for Senator, uh, excuse me, for Governor Pence, uh, he has, you know, I think he'll be in a different predicament and this is something that you should expect Senator Kane to push him on is is he going to defend all of the offensive things that uh, Donald Trump has said or is he going to be more interested in protecting his own credibility for the future so I think that's what we'll see in the dynamics tonight Jen Palmer straight from the debate prep room <laughs> thank you so much thanks for having thanks me for being with us Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.